So we're here this morning um, with Farms at Work and we're going to be teaching you how to make a um, solitary bee nest for leafcutter bees and mason bees. To make a nest like this you need some simple simple ingredients. Baling twine and you can get any kind of baling twine. Secateurs, you need those for cutting down the Phragmites. Scissors so that you can cut the baling twine. Two elastic bands. So and a garbage bag. And a garbage bag. And we'll show you why you need all these things but these are the, the fancy tools that you need to make a um, bee nest. Phragmites is a very invasive plant. Um, it's a plant that you generally want to try and get rid of. And so right now I want to show you how to do it properly so that you actually don't spread Phragmites around. So she's cutting it as low to the ground as she possibly can. So before we make the nest, we've got to get rid of the seed heads. So these are the seed heads here. You don't want to be taking those seed heads uh, with you. They need to go into the garbage and not be left behind. We've stripped off all the leaves off of all of these stems and now Beatrice and I are going to uh, trim them down to a size that's workable. Probably about this long. It's important that the nest not be too short so you don't want to be making a nest that's this long, it's too short, and what, what, what ends up happening is you end up with a nest where only males or only females eggs will be laid because the, um, the, the female legs, eggs are laid at the back of the nest and the, the male eggs are laid at the front of the nest. As you can see, they're not all the same length and that doesn't matter at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's better if they're not all the same length. Does it matter if the stems are green versus dry? As we're making them in the fall, this, this green will all go brown by the next year because this nest is not going to be occupied until next season, so next spring, summer, fall. So what we do be is we put those elastic bands around this, hold it in place to make it easy for you to wrap them. And do you want them different lengths at one end and same length? Um, no, they can be all different lengths. We don't want this to look like an apartment building in which all the front doors are the same. Each one of these represents one home for a bee, each stock. We want her front door to look different from all the other front doors so she knows which one is hers. So now we've got the nest and we need to put it somewhere. And here's a great uh, crotch where we could stick this down in there and it would be very tight. It's far enough off the ground that they're not going to be uh, getting wet if it rains. And then um, we've tipped it forward just a little bit so that rain pours out of it. This is another thing you can use for a bee nest and what they've done here is create the holes that we're creating with our straws. They've created them right in the wood. Now the problem with this kind of a nest is there's no way of cleaning it. And so what I do is I take these little Phragmites stems and I stick them in the holes and you've got to of course get stems that will, will actually uh, fit. See how this little hole right here that's got mud at the front entrance? That's because a mason bee has laid a whole bunch of eggs and between each egg she puts a wall of mud and then this is the wall of mud on the very outside. So that's what you're going to see um, if a mason bee occupies those, those Phragmites stems you're going to see a mud block at the end of the Phragmites stem and that'll make you know that you've got a bee living in there. 